<clears throat> oh, the <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> the eight did I just say? Anyway. <clears throat> Hey guys, another week, another video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I uh, just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing me. Like I said before, this channel cannot be possible without the love and support you guys showing me. So thank you so much. This week I got a request and I want to honor that request to do intervals. So you might be wondering what an interval is. We're going to get to it in the video. So stick around, it's gonna be a great video, and hope you guys enjoy it. All right, let's jump right into it. Uh, what is an interval? An interval is the distance or the difference between two notes, uh, usually in a, in a major scale or any kind of scale. You're gonna have eight different intervals. So let's recap with the major scale. Uh, let's do the D major scale, and like I said in other videos before, it's an interval system, so we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. Okay, so an interval is everything I just played, including the semitones or the half steps between spaces. So like that. What would be our first interval would be a minor second, which is the smallest interval. It is it's the smallest one because it's the closest to the root. So you have your root note or the tonic. And you're going to go up half a step. That's a minor second. Usually it'll be a lot easier to see it on a piano, but we're bass players. This is basic, so we're going to stick with the bass. So minor second. And a really cool way to remember it is the minor second is exactly the theme for the movie Jaws. Very easy to remember. Right, the next interval we're going to discuss is going to be a major second, and that one's going to be a whole step or two half steps apart, and that one sounds like this. Minor second, major second, okay, and a really cool way to remember this one is happy birthday, happy birthday song, everybody knows it, so, and it's a really easy way to remember it. So, minor second, major second, and now it brings me to... A minor third. Once again, that, that sounds like this. And the best way to remember that one, it is one of the, I guess, the lullabies to go to sleep. on the list we have a major third so let's recap minor third and a major third sounds like this and an easy way to remember it is take it way way back to some church days <laughs> we're gonna get oh when the saints go marching in what is it when the saints march march in or when the saints go marching in, something like that. But it's see major third, minor third. The next interval it's called the perfect fourth, and why it's a perfect 
the reason they call it a perfect fourth, uh, so you got a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and a perfect octave. The reason those are called perfects is because it doesn't matter if you're on a minor scale or a major scale, they do not change. They stay exactly the same. You got your your second, your major second, it could be a minor second, you have a third, it could be a minor third, but fourths and fifths and the octave, they stay the same. So that's why they call it a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and a perfect octave. Um, and a fourth sounds like this. So there's a few different ways. I've heard people remember it with Here Comes the Bride. I don't even know it. Anyway, but I like to do um, Amazing Grace. That's the perfect fourth. And it brings us to the next interval, which is the perfect fifth. And the perfect fifth sounds like this. So you could do twinkle, twinkle, little star. Or if you're like me and you like Star Wars, you could do one of the Star Wars theme songs. Okay, full disclosure, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, so I don't even know what the song is called, but it works. So there you go, that's the perfect fit. Our next interval is gonna be a tritone. So now, some people call it tritone, other people call it augmented fourth, others call it a diminished fifth, which is all fine. It's an augmented four because it's a half step up from a four. And it's diminished because it's a half step down from a five. Okay? And the interval sounds like this. I know it sounds very dissonant. The tritone was pretty much prohibited in like, classical music really 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 back in the day <laughs> they used to think it wasn't it wasn't holy enough or it was it was the devil's the devil's interval so just because of the dissonance so they tried to stay away from really doing it but <clears throat> it's my favorite interval I really like how it sounds and a cool way to remember it is playing the Simpsons theme song so it goes Our next interval is the minor six. So the minor six sounds like this. Okay, and the way I remember it is playing the entertainer. I think that's what it's called. next interval it's going to be the major six okay so the recap minor six you hear the difference automatically immediately not automatically sorry and this one is really cool because it's the theme song for the NBC channel or logo My Spanish speakers, it's in bicycle and BC. Okay, uh, so that's that's that one. Next interval, it's the minor seven. Okay, and if you play it, play like that, it sounds really nice. It's not dissonant or nothing. So I really like the minor seven, and this one. Um, I remember a really good movie called West Side Story. It's like a musical. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. It's really, really good. It's not a plug. because They're not paying me to say this, but it's a good movie. Uh, and there's a song there that's called Somewhere. And that's how I 
remember it, so it was. There's no place for us. So go watch it, turn it. It's going to be an easy, easy way to remember the minor seven. The next interval, it's the major seven. So the minor one sounds like this minor seven, major. And this one, it's I remember it because the seven always wants to resolve back to the one. So it goes. See what I mean? If you play in the major scale. Do re mi fa so la ti do. And if you play them together, it sounds really dissonant. It sounds like this. See that major seven compared to the minor seven. Very pretty, very nice. This one just sounds dissonant, but it sounds like that because it wants to resolve up. See, so that's how I remember the, the major seven. You have the perfect octave or the octave, and it sounds like this. This one is very easy to remember. It's you can use the song uh, "Somewhere Over the Rainbow." I, I hope that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. So it's somewhere. There you have it. All the intervals. So you got the unison, which is the same one, minor second. Jaws, major third, I mean major second, happy birthday, minor third, lullaby, major third, with the saints, perfect fourth, uh, amazing grace, perfect fifth, Star Wars, Tritone, The Simpsons, uh, minor six, The Entertainer, Major six, NBC, minor seven, is somewhere. Major seven wants to resolve up an octave somewhere over the right. There you have it, all the intervals. So why are intervals important? I think they're extremely important to know. Uh, for one, it makes uh, learning chords very easy. Like I explained it two videos ago, you have your intervals. So the one, the three, and the five make a major triad. So one, three, five, it's a major triad. Now if you flat the third, if you have a minor third, you go one, minor third, five, it's a minor triad. Hear the difference? Major triad. minor triad and so forth and so forth it's, it's going to be really easy for you guys to be able to do arpeggios when you play okay minors and that's just going to open up a whole new vocabulary for you guys if you guys are soloing so practice your intervals they should be able to give you a broader or more extensive vocabulary they work for me and I hope they work for you as well but there you have it guys intervals they are the heart of music I love intervals and practice them all the time I encourage you to, to memorize them, to learn them. Uh, maybe in another video I'll explain descending intervals because right now we only practice ascending. Uh, but they're incredibly useful. So especially if you want to play by ear, if you have a gig where they want you to improvise, it makes it so much easier to be able to understand intervals. This was it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, any comments, please do so below. Uh, if you guys want me to cover any other, any other topics, any other subjects, I would be more than happy. Thank you so much for, for asking, for, for commenting, and just
just looking forward to all you guys' comments. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next week. Remember, stay happy and keep it slappy.